Welcome to What's Wrong There. I'm architect Parumal Nagapushnan. Today, the pandemic is ravaging and raging. Expected, our lockdown has failed with 11,000 cases per day. Many have called the prime minister to step down as he is sick. The country is lamenting with white flag and black flags. The nation is suffering. Everyone is in pain. Today, we have a guest. He is Professor Tajuddin. Professor Tajuddin does not need needs no introduction. He is outspoken from UCSI. He is a prophetic writer, award-winning author, recently awarded for critical thinking. There's no more suitable person than Professor Tajuddin to discuss who will be the suitable candidate for the interim prime minister. Welcome, Professor Tajuddin. Uh, today, as our prime minister is not well, and with few leaders at the helm, our nation is at the worst in solving the pandemic and the leaders are often uh, beset with corruption. Professor, welcome. Thank you. Professor, if you were next to the Agong and the Agong sought for your advice, who among the leaders will you advise? We have uh, Rafida Aziz, Tommy Thomas, Said Sadiq, Haji Awang, Gobin, Gobin Singh, Gwon Eng, Rafizi, Vika Siong, uh, Vigna Swaran, Anis Yusuf. And so what do you think, uh, Professor? Who will best fit the role as an interim prime minister to take us to the elections? Rosalie was uh, one of the uh, candidates. I think um, as much as I don't like to put any politician or former politician uh, like uh, Rafida Aziz and even to the certain extent to Kurozale, um, uh, we of course have politicians like uh, you know Said Sadiq and all that, but uh, it, it, the fact remains that Malaysia is like a very very old institution, full of this Malay uh, kind of a norm of doing things, very 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 Malay because it's been Malay oriented for so many uh, so many years. That's not just Malay; it's very Amno oriented. It has a certain way of its uh, uh, doing things. I'm not talking just about politicians, right? I'm talking about civil servant uh, Najib. And then I think when Najib did not do the things that he wanted to perhaps uh, pro propagate his legacy, you know, the, uh, uh, then he, uh, he started his uh, way of trying to dismantle uh, Najib. And uh, that worked in line with the Pakatan Harapan. And then we saw Rafida coming to the fore. And that was the time when she started making speeches I knew that she and Mahate, uh, you know, synchronous in their in their thoughts. Um, uh, so, are they trying to save Malaysia? I don't really think so. Uh, I think they are trying to save whatever legacy that they had left uh, in terms of uh, whatever private dealings that they had. Um, so this is uh, quite quite certain. Uh, when we see that Mahathir coming back into power, he first thing appointed, uh, I think, Rapida and a few others to be, what do you call it? Uh, the elders, uh, elder or, or some sort of uh, advisors, things like that. And some say these people have more power than the cabinet. So the cabinet of Pakatan Harapan is a poor excuse for, uh, I mean, they are, they are good people, but then they were made into little boys and little girls uh, under the Mahathir uh, punya playbook so, so, uh, you, so uh, yeah. are you are you recommending uh, Rafida Aziz or not uh, no definitely not because then she will be the mouthpiece of Mahathir and, and weave their their power structure back into into um, she would use should probably use that as a as an opportunity uh, to to build back their power structure I mean that, that's the first rule of uh, politics which uh, doesn't really care much about the people uh, let's let's imagine that the meritocracy is now in in place and the king mm -hmm. says let's be non-political as well would you consider uh, advising Tommy Thomas okay the, the rest of the names that you have put up there they have their own capabilities and all that. Uh, but as I said just now, this is a Malay, uh, Malay, Malay structure. I mean, this is mostly Malay. The civil civil servant uh, has been turned into a Malay institution. Okay, that, that, that is undeniable. It wasn't supposed to be like that. I, I heard uh, narratives by Dr. Ted D that uh, in order to give the Dasa economy baru, then the idea was the trade-off, what they call the social contract. 
you know, uh, so that the uh, civil servants will be balanced, you know, uh, with uh, Malays and non-Malays and all that. But I don't know what happened. Um, somewhere along the line, everything became Malay. I mean, so this is a, it's a totally Malay thing. And so if you're looking at Tommy Thomas and uh, with due respect to his ability and all that, but uh, I don't think so. Same thing with Said Sadiq, being very young, uh, although he's Malay, but he's a new Malay. It doesn't have, uh, because as I said, it's a, um, it's a, it's a Malay um, power structure uh, within the civil uh, servant. He has to command civil servant. And uh, I don't think he'll be able to do it. Okay. Um, he might be able to appoint certain Malay personalities uh, to help him with that. That, that, that could work. Uh, but still, uh, the minds of the Malays, remember the, the, when Lim Guan Eng was appointed and also um, Tommy Thomas was appointed, there was a so-called he went cry as if uh, this is the end of the world for Malays. I mean, that's how they think. I don't think like that. So, so but, in uh, other words, uh, would, uh, would you say that the, the, the powers of these, uh, these uh, Malays, Malay extreme groups is it real or is it an imaginary thing that Mahathir uh, contrived? Okay, the so-called Malay extreme group, actually, uh, I, I feel, is actually a, a, a paid uh, entity. Okay, they were paid. Uh, there are some Islamic NGOs that I don't see them helping the poor, whatever. They are. Their role is just to come up with issues. And they are, they are surviving, they are paid very well by somebody. I'm, I'm just assuming, I'm not going to name names. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, uh, the other Malay, like Prakasa, you know, they were set up by Mahathir, remember? And uh, they are also uh, wanting to agitate people so that they become relevant. You see, if people like Malays who are, who are going, who has already gone to universities, really read books, are really, they're not educated, they just went. So, so here is the situation when you say that uh, they are extremist group. Actually, extremist group is not really the, the issue here. The issue here is the middle class Malays. And the issue here is also the civil servant who are Malays. All are not reading. All have the same narrative of their so-called unlearned fathers or forefathers in the so-called kampung in the days when they said they worry about the Malay, uh, punya, uh, the, the Malay punya so called survival and, and, and worrying about it becoming like Singapore. All these narratives are the same. I, I, I've, I've seen I've seen it. I've been with professors, I've been with so called people who have uh, the highest uh, learning. And they are so entrenched within this, uh, this perspective. This is something which people fail uh, to understand on Malays. Uh, they, they think it's extremist group like Hadi Awang. No. It is the, now the Dokongi oleh uh, apa nama, what we call the, the Malay middle class and upper middle class uh, that is actually, actually having it. So it's very difficult for you to move in a very totally Malay. Uh, I'm not using, as I said, it's not about race Malay. It's a mindset of uh, being uh, a Malay first and Malaysia number five or something like that. Um, so, so, so that's why Tommy Thomas and those others who are like Lim Guan Eng cannot, uh, cannot and will not survive uh, in this uh, 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 machinery and uh, of the governance and government uh, all the way from the federal top to the local level to the local council. Uh, it will never work. So that is why the name of such person like Tengku Razale was uh, muted by Zaid Ibrahim my friend Dr. Anis Yusal, and they gave uh, some sort of a high regard for, for him being a tokoh Melayu. Okay, and he in fact is not a Mahathir person like what Rafidah is. And when I think about it, I, I, would, I, would, I would support that idea. So, Professor, coming to the reality in the ground, that is the mm -hmm. Malay environment that forged uh, who the Prime Minister or the Interim Prime Minister will be, uh, um, so, so left with just uh, a few others, right? We have Rafida Aziz, who you have, you know, turned down completely. What about uh, Rafizi? What about Sai Sedek? What about mm -hmm. uh, the, the name you propose, Dr. Anis? How do these people? How do these people uh, will forge out a new new leadership? Um, yeah. Is there, is there any okay, opportunity? Uh, 
for them to come out and do well at this time, solve the pandemic yes, problem, solve the economic problem, solve the corruption problem, solve mm -hmm. the judiciary problem. Uh, are these people capable of leading leading the harsh environment that we are already in? If there was a virus that came to this country and struck down all the veteran AMNO like Tajuddin and Zahid and all that, and suddenly they all you know disappear. Yes, that would be my answer in one sense. But then also you, you also have to eliminate the, the the first, second, and third tier of all the civil servants, the police and the, the military, everything. You know, you have to start at the third tier and then build up, and then it's possible. But of course, that is an impossibility, it's a fantasy. So so people like Rafizi, hundred percent talented, I have no issue with that. He is also a Malay and he also understands uh, quite a bit of things, but uh, he will be fish out of water, you know, in the, in the, in the construct of uh, present, you know, civil servants, eh? we have, uh, we have uh, um, over treated them to think that they themselves are a little empress. You go to their building, you look at the building, their building, I mean, architecture, you look at the building, building is incredible. And when you want to go there, you can't even find parking. Okay, why is it that you can't find parking inside the building in which you are to be served? You, you are the citizen of this country, and that building is meant to serve you. But no, we servants said that building is for us. That's so why I use the analogy of you having a very big bungalow and employ ten servants. Suddenly, you one day you come home, servants close the gate. And says Sir, you cannot come in because this is untuk kaki tangan parking saja dalam dalam uh, dalam rumah your own house okay so you are paying them and they won't allow you in to park your car see forget uh, then it, I always make this analogy if you were to go to Tesco you know I've been to some Tesco um, I, uh, the workers are not allowed to park under the cover. You know, they are supposed to park outside because those under the cover are for the customers. So they treat customers very, very well because without customers, they, they will close down, right? So same thing here with the uh, government. They forget that without the rakyat to pay the taxes, to pay their salaries, and also for them to do the service, they are out of work. But they say that, no, no, this is our right, okay? Uh, we are the now the landowners. Okay, like the municipal council, they think that they are landowners. They are not landowners. They are just doing this for the people under the democracy. Okay. Okay. So for that reason, that it's difficult to see uh, any new talent. So, professor, uh, uh, having said that, having said all this, uh, the dire situation that we are in, the kind of uh, second tier leaders that have not been groomed to face this um, this difficult world. Uh, so what? Who who is left behind? I, I think. I think I think you, you you really need a person who who consciously understand that you have to change into a uh, into a new future. I, I don't know, but I think Anwar Ibrahim uh, could be the person uh, to initiate the change with perhaps hopefully I pray <laughs> Tunku Razale. But uh, Teku Razaleh being an old politician, uh, uh, as I said, he, he, uh, he doesn't have any, uh, uh, any people following him and things like that at the moment. Uh, but then he could actually rebuild his base. You have to watch this uh, first, second, third tier leaders, uh, let them have a nice pension and uh, gratuity and say goodbye and maybe close their, their <laughs> corruption cases. You know, and then only uh, build up the third, the third, uh, the third tier of leadership into uh, more, more God consciousness in, in terms of Islam and Malay, and also then move in a few more, uh, start to build up the multiracial uh, thing. You could even start with Bumi Putra if you want to go with Bumi Putra, then you get in the Kadazan or the Morut, uh, 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 those who are educated, put them in the Malaysian federal federal situation instead of letting them, you know. Uh, way back there, how many Sabahan or Sarawakan, Sarawakian punya orang you have in the federal? Really? 
you know that. Prof mm. Professor Fajuddin, do you really think that uh, Anwar will be able to step up as he as he required? But the last time when he was mm. required to step up, when the dilemma was uh, at its at its height, in mm. fact, uh, he failed. He he moved backward to pick up uh, Mahate as the lead again. So he 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 was not there as a leader. You think he'll be mm. able to lead us anytime in the future? Okay. Uh, you see, in AMNO, there are two kinds of leaders. One, they are visionary, a leader who are visionary. Mm -hmm. uh, these are Tun Mahathir, Anwar Ibrahim, people like Tun Raza. Uh, I don't know much about Tun Hussein On. Tukar Abdul Rahman, okay, lah, he's the, the first and all that. Then there are the Gurkhas. Okay, the Gurkhas are those people who do the rafting, the soldiers. They are the soldiers, the foot soldiers. So when you have leaders like Mahate or you have the leaders like Tun Abdul Raza, then then uh, you also have the, the 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 rank and file, okay. So what we have we are seeing now is that the rank and file are now holding the positions. I mean, imagine you have people like Tajuddin, Ahmad Maslan, uh, all these. Uh, sometimes you can even call them jokers, you know, because they really don't have any vision. All they do is make noise, make threats. So, so, so that, that's why uh, I think Anwar Ibrahim shows great leadership uh, in terms of his. Uh, I mean, some people say he could have left the country, but he said no. You know, he wants to fight it off, and I wouldn't be the man to actually stay in prison for six six years. Uh, he also chose to not forgive, but work with somebody like Mahathir who had done him so much wrong and was never remorseful and never apologetic. But uh, he saw uh, the importance even to the point of arguing with his daughter. People see this as weakness. I see this as strength, the strength to forgive. And he always says that. No, we, we, uh, so Anis was the chairman, was elected chairman. And then... Uh, he was also the integrity. I also met him before that as integrity. Sometimes I see the civil servant, ah, the civil servant, ah, you know. But then when I began to see, uh, to read some of his articles and columns, he's a columnist for Sinar Haryan, and we get to know each other. Uh, he, he told me that he had once uh, presented several times the integrity uh, guidelines and even argued with ministers. And the fact we, we have a number of tops, huh? We are world best in corruption, yes. <laughs> or among the rank. Um, Definitely. Right now, a pandemic, we are among the best. Uh, in, in the worst mm -hmm. of, um, you know, mm -hmm. with with eleven thousand cases, I think we are ten times worse off than India. Uh, mm -hmm. We, uh, you know, we're not doing very well, isn't it? Eh? So, I mean, it, no. given these harsh conditions, eh, uh, that things are very harsh eh, in the in the political environment that uh, makes very harsh judgments on, on, on go, that goes along racial lines. Yes, we are, we are, we are racial. Will we ever see a time in the future, the next few years, uh, a change in the way we think, given the failure of the, the, the Malay leadership? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I don't really see any hope for Malaysia. And that's why I wrote the article, No Hope for Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I meant was that the Malaysia that we have set up in terms of our political system, in terms of our civil uh, servant, judiciary, and all these things, uh, to change them is a it's a, it's, it's a monumental task uh, because first you have to have someone with a will to change, and I think Anwar has that, but even he. Uh, may not succeed if he doesn't have the uh, the people who actually, you know, can be put part of the change. Um, but then he was never given a chance. Okay, so so we will never know. And uh, the fact that Amno always says no Anwar, no DAP, uh, you know, <laughs> it's something for you to actually think about. Why why is it they don't want Amno? Is I'm, I'm, Anwar uh, has uh, billions and billions of ringgit stashed somewhere, or is Anwar, uh, you know, kill uh, twenty percent? So what? Why? Why so throw? You know. Uh, so so this no Anwar, no DAP. How how come? Because Anwar may not be as corrupt as all these people and knows all their skeletons. Mm. Okay. So so that's why it's no Anwar and no DAP. And if Anwar you know, had to make deals with uh, some of these people in order to make sure that uh, he establishes himself. I'm saying that 
that's a political strategy that uh, I would accept. And that uh, some people say, how come you work with Najib and all that? Well, this is if you want to see some change, then the transition period has to be. Uh, I wrote a long time ago. No, I, I gave a speech at uh, Singapore. I said this country cannot change until uh, unless Amno is part of a government with you know uh, PH and all that. It, 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 it has to be because they they hold now we we have past coming up very strong with all this Islamic thing and all that very very uh, conservative. Uh, so the more so that you would need a new a new kind of I, I tried to write about that that Amno can rejuvenate itself. But Amno is full of Tajuddin Abdul Rahman, full of uh, Zahid Samidis, and who are who are of the old lot. You have people like Shahrin, who's not painted yet. You know Shahrin, the the pemuda, and uh, Ashraf. I don't think is uh, <laughs> he's going to be one of those uh, orang orang lama. He's already on that path. So, professor, you so, you really do believe that that there's no hope in this uh, country's future. Because the whole uh, system is system is corrupt, isn't it? Huh? Mm -hmm. Now let's let's look at uh, if if you have some glimmer of hope on Anwar Ibrahim, what mm -hmm. about him uh, in alliance with uh, Said Siddiq and Rafizi? Will then that be a little bit of a brighter uh, future yes, for? Yes, it, it is, but it's still not enough. It's been proven during the Pakatan Harapan in your time mm -hmm. uh, that the Malays, uh, because of the DAP, somehow. If the new, he said, let's say Anwar can uh, take power, then I, I will have to suggest that, sorry, lah, even though DAP have a lot of capable people, uh, then they may have to be a bit sidelined by not having uh, the major uh, the major posts and all that, you know, because it's not time yet. And uh, and so these other people will have to be, uh, you know, it's a point this uh, uh, in, the, in the interest of time. We, we just mm -hmm. have a few minutes left. Uh, okay. Professor, can you just sum up? Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. If you were visited, called upon by the Agong and asked mm -hmm. for an advice of all mm -hmm. this situation that we are in, mm -hmm. who are the two, three top leaders that you will choose? Who would you choose? Uh, three top leaders? Yes. Yeah, uh, Tunku Razale. Uh, definitely uh, Dr. Anis Yusal and definitely uh, Rafizi. Uh, should be broken into the tray. It cannot be Anwar Ibrahim because you can't have two leaders. You know, uh, these are two alphas, so so you you can't have that. I would put Anwar, but then you know, um, it's it's really not not the time for him because of uh, uh, the the malayness around is uh, something that is different. And uh, so Tengku Razaleh definitely I agree with Zaid as well. Um, so these are the three. I would definitely put the name to to Ago. Okay, thank you, Professor. Now let's wind up. I got a, a surprise question for you. I didn't tell oh, you that. Surprise. I thought there was a surprise question. Okay. okay. How would you best describe in one word the following leaders? Okay, I'm going to put the names. One, one word uh, from my yes. perspective. Yes. Uh, you got to be quick hmm. at this. Huh? Rafida yeah. Aziz. And trustworthy. Hmm. Uh, Tommy Thomas. Um. Um, it's difficult to find the words. Uh, Tommy Thomas, um, a word to describe him. Yes. Um, this is very difficult. <laughs> um, uh, well, we could call it naive. Lah. Naive, okay. Said Sadiq. Said Sadiq, uh, energetic. Oh, sorry, dynamic. Yeah. Hadi Awang. Uh, Adi Awang is a, is now I would call it a, what's the word charlatan? Gobin Singh. Gobin Singh, uh, we would say he's uh, courageous. Guan Eng. Guan Eng. Uh, uh, what is the word for strength? Um, <laughs> is the word strong? Okay. Is that okay? Strong? Rafizi? Very strong. Oh, Rafizi. Uh, hmm, strategic. We Kassiong. We Kassiong. Um, uh, we Kassiong is a uh, politician. Witness, Warren. 
Hmm? Weakness warrant. <laughs> Weakness warrant. Um, opportunist. Anis Yusuf. Ah, Anis Yusuf. Uh, integrity. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Well, we come to the end of our discussion. Thank you very much for hmm. your opinion. And I think <laughs> we learned a bit okay, from this discussion and uh, there is a lot more we have to do in Malaysia. So signing yes. off, what's wrong out there? Parumal Nagapushnam, thank you.